It is that health is the crown that only the sick can see. My diabetic story is where we'll begin then. So I've always been uh, an active individual. When I was young, I played high-level hockey and uh, competed in track and played football and rugby through high school. And I was a basically a fierce competitor and always maintained a, uh, quite a, an elite uh, physical uh, condition in my body. Never had really any health issues. I never got really sick. Um, I was athlete of the year multiple years, all through junior high and, and uh, senior high school. When I left uh, school and began my life in the professional career, I became a police officer. And as a police officer, I took my health and my uh, fitness extremely seriously and was won the most, you know, physically fit the officer award and uh, in the academy and, and held the record for the police officer fitness test, um, which has been beaten since then, all these young studs. But the fact is, is that I maintained a high level and a high standard in my physical fitness, my eating and, and everything. I was 26 years old. I had one son. I was married and I thought I had life by the tail. And literally out of the blue, I started to feel tired, fatigued. I didn't understand why I was eating well. I couldn't stop drinking. I was drinking water and then and all kinds of different beverages, just non-ending peeing and I was starting to lose weight. And ultimately within four weeks, I'd lost almost well, over 40 pounds. I went from 190 pounds and about 8% body fat to just under 150 pounds in less than a month. I was tested for everything. I'd been overseas in Asia and they thought it was some itis, some type of a bug. And they were testing me for that. And as a police officer, six months previously, I'd had a full physical workup and I'd taken a series of vaccines. Within six months of all of that, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And what I was told by my doctors is that heat that happens to everybody. If you're in high stress environment and there's a trigger, that trigger basically created what's called an autoimmune deficiency. And I had an autoimmune uh, disorder which attacked my white blood cells grew up uh, uh, too many of them, and they attacked my own pancreas, and I, uh, uh, the islet cells uh, were killed. And I ended up with type 1 diabetes, and I've been a diabetic now uh, since I was 26. So, what is that now? I'm 51. So, that's basically 25 years of diabetes. And it's been an interesting adventure to learn how to deal with this uh, condition. No, they actually call it a disability. I don't like that. I don't like being labeled or being told I can't do anything. It's been an interesting journey though. I went through anger, I went through frustration. I did everything right, why me? And on and on it went. Well, health affects us body, it affects our mind and it affects our spirit. And it basically almost broke me. I had a year it took to get back into healthy condition. I could get back to work and just learning to live with the condition and manage my sugars so that I wasn't a risk to myself or to others. And uh, basically from this condition, I realized that the type of lifestyle I was living as a police officer with shift work, with what I would consider healthy eating really wasn't that healthy eating because it, it, um, was sporadic and the overall lifestyle was not the best or conducive to a stable health and, and management of my body. So I made a choice to leave it and go into business. Well, managing diabetes, period, whether you're a police officer, a businessman, a, a teacher, a, a 
stay at home mom is really a starts in our mindset. And my mindset wasn't great. I was more of a victim. I'd blame my performance on my diabetes in any form of habit that I was doing. And I was still quite high functioning, but underlying in my mindset was this victim uh, mindset. And it led to me actually gaining a lot of weight. And for me, I really struggled with that. And I got up to as high as 225 pounds. And again, I started to make excuses. I'm on planes. I'm traveling all around the world doing business. And I had to realize that I had to take accountability and start to step up and over the line instead of being a victim and just blaming the condition or whatever it was that was going in my mind. I can't even remember now because I've changed my mindset so much about it and uh, taking control of my health. But what I really want to talk today is that that statement that I said earlier, that health is a crown that only the sick can see, made me really realize how much I envy people that were able to just do whatever they wanted and their bodies seemed to just function and they got the results that they wanted. But it came to an awareness that that was a lie. That all of us, and I had made a choice in my life by choosing the career I did, the lifestyle, the things that I did, the way I dealt with my stress. I was accountable for where I was at. I chose to take the vaccine. I chose to eat the way I did. I chose to go without sleep. I chose to do so many different things that I had to step up and really realize that if I wanted to be healthy, if I wanted to live my ideal form of life, I had to choose it. So today, I live a completely different lifestyle. And every day I'm striving to live my ideal form of life. And we'll dig into that a little bit more as we talk today, Bob and I, about health and about diabetes and how it impacts all of us. My story is a, a very typical Canadian story, and it goes a pound a year. That's the end of my story. A pound a year. 40 years later, 40 extra pounds. <laughs> 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 Thank goodness it wasn't two pounds a year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know what, Bob, though, you've been always so athletic and such a high performance in your life. Share with us the story of, you know, what your, your overall experience has been in dealing with health and what were the things that made you have better health and the things that made you add that pound a, a year? Yeah. You know, I, I think that when I, when I was a young man, I was just so oriented towards business and family. And I had no education in nutrition or portions of food or exercise. I really had nothing. That was back uh, quite a while ago. There's so much more information that's available. But I wonder how many people actually have the correct information, Heath. And so when you talk about that, too, there's so much knowledge in the world. Is that it's not only about the physical health. We're talking about health overall. That, in fact, there's the mental health aspect. There's the emotional health aspect. And there's the spiritual health aspect too. So I felt that if I didn't want to be exhausted, if I didn't want to be tired, if I didn't want to be sick to my stomach, if I didn't want to be sad or angry or afraid or full of anxiety or feel bloated or feel heavy, it wasn't just the physical aspect. It was mental, spiritual, and emotional. All these things had to be addressed as a healthy, as a, I want to improve this health portion. So here I am today, just uh, just crested 60, uh, 61, and, and cr crashing on at 62. And I, f I feel mentally, emotionally, and spiritually stronger than I've ever been, and um, and physically as well. I just put down my my stats for what I'm what I'm doing in the gym and what I'm uh, what I'm how many k's that I'm producing on hikes and bikes in the week, and I'm pretty impressed. There's not many 61 year olds I don't think out there that are doing what I'm doing. I've still got a lot of improvement, but I've got those goals. I've got those goals. So uh, very excited about the next decade. Health. That's, according to Webster uh, Dictionary and to Google, health is a state of physical, mental, and social well-being in which disease and infirmity are absent. It's also stated that it's being free from illness or injury, a person's mental or physical condition. So basically. 
the lack of health is really a disability. It's taking away our ability to have physical and mental conditions that ultimately stop us from having the ability to move, to have our senses working for us, and be able to do the activities that we love to do in and our life. Exactly. And if you think about it in a practical way, right, that inability really impacts us on our roles in life. So if we're working in a work environment or we're leading a team or we're leading a department or we're, uh, we're a, in my case, a husband or a father or a community leader or a coach or something like that, you know, those are the areas that you want to have high performance. And if you don't have that health, that uh, it's really hard to perform. You feel exhausted. You feel tired. You've, you don't have the energy to prepare. You don't have the energy to produce at the times you want to produce. So health so important practically in our lives. 100%. And it all comes back to health and the integration and management of our energy. Because energy is everything. That's our physical, mental, emotional, environmental, and social energy and health. So it just hit me. What is the main thing that's really affecting more of us than any of us actually realize? It's the condition I live with. It's diabetes. Well, diabetes is a true pandemic. And it's a real global issue for health. So I'm just going to share a bunch of stats. And it's quite staggering. Diabetes is a health pandemic. And it's an invisible disability that affects one in three Canadians. Actually, North Americans. There are currently an estimated 11 million diabetics in Canada. That's type 1, type 2, or pre-diabetics. There's over 100 million Americans that are suffering with diabetes. And 46% of these are undiagnosed, but are living with serious health conditions. 90% of diabetes is reversible. It's through our choices. And that's what you were just talking about. How do we live our ideal form of life? How do we be the leader, the father, the mother, the athlete, anything that you want to do in life if you don't have health? Talking about that, those stats, 11 million Canadians, 100 million Americans, that's, you know, those are fascinating figures. You read the headlines, right? Or you listen to the news and it's constantly coming up um, about how people are depressed, how people are full of anxiety, how people are sad, how people don't have any energy, how people are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the, those are the symptoms. Those are the symptoms of pre-diabetes and diabetes, right? That it's, right. Uh, I feel sad. I have no energy. It's like, Oh, drink some more water. You know, people want simple solutions, but uh, to, you know, rather complex problems. And I loved your comment about it's all about the energy. So, you know, 100 million Americans or more are, are overweight, let's say. They're, I'm not sure what the stat is there. You know, so people want to, quote, manage their weight. But it's, you can't manage your weight if you don't have any energy, if you don't have a management plan. It's more complex than I've done this too. You did this as well. You just, in your story, you said the same thing, man. I started to gain weight and that didn't last a month or two. That lasted years myself as well. Right. And it's like to get a grip on this, to actually manage your weight. It's more complex than just wanting to lose 20 pounds going on the keto diet, right? Go on the keto <laughs> diet. I mean, the diet, what's that? What's the what's the diet industry worth? hundred billion a year, four hundred billion dollars a year in the diet industry? Because people are trying desperately to lose weight. It has nothing to do with losing weight. It's all about that management plan. It's all about right. energy. You know, Bob, you and I do a lot of work in the corporate and professional side as well with leadership and team uh, training and, and really affecting our personal and professional lives. 
There's nothing that we do. They're both interconnected. You can't take yourself out of the professional game. And likewise, you can't take the, the person out of the professional game, right? So I think uh, us understanding what the leading causes of diabetes and really the leading causes of the loss of health are the following. One, inactivity. It's contrary to everyone's belief. If I rest, I'll get more energy. No, inactivity is energy stealer. It's the number one. We have a sedentary life is a choice. The couch only creates couch potatoes. <laughs> we need to be active. So the second cause is unhealthy eating choices. Nobody, well, I shouldn't say anybody, our parents did force us to eat certain things. And unfortunately, it was usually green beans, it was uh, squash, it was healthy choices that they were trying to teach us to eat. But we just wanted the hamburger or the cake or the ice cream. But our choice of what we put in our mouth is the fastest way to actually heal us. So unhealthy eating choices, number two cause of diabetes. Three, it yeah. is overweight and obesity. Well, they're caused by the first two choices we've made. So if we want to reverse and lose weight and kill obesity, it's getting active and making different eating choices. So the fourth, which I was shocked at, but we all know it, smoking. It changes the chemistry in our body and the way our insulin and our blood sugar works, and it will create and a lot of people say, well, I lose weight when I stop smoking. Well, it's actually not that. It's the hormonal changes that are happening with the toxins that are being put in. And it's a false weight loss. So you can eat what you want in that area. But that's another whole topic. Um, and the fifth is actually aging. Just getting old. Diabetes comes with aging. And there's some really critical uh, stats that, and studies that have been done. And just in 2019, uh, Diabetes Canada did a complete study on the cost of diabetes and, and the leading causes of it. And they did a whole Ipsos public opinion poll on it. And do you know that less than 50% of Canadians can even identify less than half of the early warning signs of diabetes? Thirst, blurred vision, fatigue, all of these types of things that are happening, uh, rapid weight gain or loss. Um, only 33% of Canadians are aware that stroke is a complication of diabetes. And only 40% of Canadians even knew that heart disease is a complication of diabetes. So here's some, just to conclude on some facts. The complications related to diabetes are serious and life-threatening. Annually in Canada, people living with diabetes account for 30% of strokes. 40% of heart attacks, 50% of kidney failure and dialysis, and 70% of non-traumatic injury amputation. Yeah. These are serious, serious health issues. So let's talk quickly just about this. There are multiple types of diabetes. Mm -hmm. I am what they call a type one. I won the lottery and I'm only, I'm in the 10% category. And that means that I'm insulin dependent. Mm -hmm. if, if I don't take insulin, I die. That's type one. Type two is your blood sugars are high and it can be managed through a combination of medications such as a metformin pill, exercise, diet, and through proper act actions taken, you can reduce it and manage it through those uh, courses of action. If you mismanage type two, then you become type one. Ah, okay. And you will be dependent on insulin. And then the, the other types are pre-diabetic, which are their insulin levels and resistance are at, at an unhealthy level, and they're on route to type two if they're not going to make lifestyle changes or choices. Now, there are uh, what we call temporary diabetes, such as gestational diabetes, and other types of uh, uh, um, disorders that will trigger diabetic symptoms and that can go, but 
just to keep it simple, you have type one insulin dependent, type two is a lifestyle or medication can help uh, the conditions and to live with it, and then pre-diabetic uh, diabetes. And right. just one last point is before we get into actually talking uh, and discussing health and how we can actually get our health back in quite a simple way. It's not as complicated as people think. Diabetes is complicated, but gaining control over it and over our health so we can live our ideal form of life is not complicated. But as, as a global pandemic, diabetes fits it. The prevalence of diabetes is that it's estimated that 415 million people are living with diabetes today, globally. And it's estimated to be one in 11 of the world's adult population is affected by it. 46 of the percent of these people are undiagnosed. And the figure, unfortunately, is expected to grow and rise to 642 million people living with diabetes worldwide by 2040. So we're in 2020. In 20 years, we're going to have more than a 30% increase. This all comes back to our health choices. Health is our responsibility. It's an individual journey. Your spouse can't help you. Your children can't help you. The best coaches in the world on nutrition, fitness, mental cannot help you unless you choose to be helped. It seems like an easy choice. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to get active, right? But the truth is that many adults today spend about 11 hours in front of a screen. So already half your day is gone just by sitting. So how do you get active when you have a family, you have uh, responsibilities at work, and you're sitting all day long? And it's um, it's... So my, my point is this, I, again, speaking from experience, is that you may want to lose weight. You may want to eat better. You may want to um, be active. Those, those three critical uh, features uh, or, or tactics that you would have. But what do you do? Like, what do you do? Where do you start? That's the complicated part, my friend. It's not as, okay, I'm going to eat better. So you, eat, like, you, you have to learn how to shop. You have to learn what's in foods. You have to learn how many calories you can eat in a day. You have to learn about the difference between proteins and carbs and sugars, et cetera, et cetera. It becomes very, very, com in my estimation, you, I'll let you pass this on because you're way better at this than me, is it becomes to the average person that has very little education or very confused information on these things. That's the way I would put it. The confusing information about exercise, uh, confusing information about nutrition, <laughs> um, and their confusing lifestyles, all confusing. It's kind of a jumble. It's like, where do I start? What do I do first? Like, I've tried this. And then, and then the bigger stumbling block, Heath, I've tried this before, man. I'm 40 years old. I've been trying for 10 years. I've been trying for 20 years, you know, and I failed. I failed. And I don't want to try again. I'm sick of trying. It doesn't work. Well, you know what? I like Edison's comments when he was doing his research and his, and his journey to providing us with uh, the light bulb. People would say, you failed a thousand times. And he goes, no, I didn't. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> A thousand different ways of how not to do it. In the end, I found out how to do it. And now we have the light bulb. He changed the world. So all of us, how do we do it? We have to choose to change and to fail forward. There's no such thing as failing if we learn. So we know that we have a pandemic with diabetes. And we know that it's going to affect almost all of us at some point in life, if not personally, in someone in our family or someone that we love. But ultimately, health is a choice. So I'm looking at this as one simple thing, and this is what we're about. It comes back to purpose. 
And what is the ideal form of life that you want to live? It's a choice to say, I am going to achieve this. It starts with that goal, that outcome that I truly, truly want. Then, that's the first step, is that choice. The most important step is the next one. Why? What is the purpose for making the change? Is it for me? Is it for my spouse? Is it for what? It doesn't matter what it is. But your why has got to be big. You've got to choose something that's going to motivate you to move forward one step at a time. I would say reach out. Reach out to Heath. Send him a note. Myself, send me a note. And um, maybe we can put, point you in the right direction. You may have people around you in your own lives, too, that are really good at this sort of thing. I would give them a call. I would give them a call. If you know some mentors, some people out there today that, you, that are really good at nutrition, really good at activity, I'd give them a call and ask them what they're doing. Because people that have done it before, people that know what to do and how to separate the really poor information from the good information is gold. The uncommon diabetic. It's the life that all of us should be living. Right? It's about addressing the four pillars, about reducing our stress and realizing that life is all about stress. It's all about energy management. And how do we deal with our physical, mental, emotional, environmental, and social stresses that are coming that we're putting our energy into? Well, we also got to identify the fact that like a battery, you got to recharge it. And that whole point of just learning to breathe, to be able to take moments in your day, to slow down and do little micro things that make a big difference in the long run, like charging the, the phone. It only takes a few moments to get it right back up if you do it at the right intervals, right? The next pillar is we have to hydrate and eat healthy. That's the best way to help deal with the physical side. We're gonna deal with all of the physical, the mental and the emotional, aspects in this journey but you have to fuel the machine you gotta put gas in the car or else it doesn't go anywhere let's choose healthy stuff that's going to really power that engine effectively put in the the 94 octane or or better if we can then the third thing is we have to exercise stop being sedentary you got to move the body whether we like it or not that's a pillar that's really critical. And the last one is proper rest and recover. Those four pillars, we can help. So we're going to be creating the program about a high-performance diabetic lifestyle. And I'm just going to share my journey and how I've gone through that, where I've been able to run half marathons. I've been able to achieve, you know, levels in golf and competitive sports that, the doctors and people say, well, you can't do that. It's too intense. It's, it's too, 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 too. How many people have tried to tell you that you're limited, that you can't do it in life? No, 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 no. We got to change that mindset. I can, I will, and I must. E.T. said that. I love his saying. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Eric Thomas, thank you. I can, I will, and I must get my ideal form of life. Together we can. So let's just begin that journey. Accept the challenge. Join us on this journey of getting the health that you want, the lifestyle that you want. Together we can do that. There's a couple of different ways to look at stress. One is the, in the negative light. Stress is bad. But... Um, that's not the truth. Stress is, has a fantastic role in our lives when we have problems. We have problems. Oh, no, we don't. We have challenges. See, just that simple mindset change to take this problem, turning the challenge, and fix that challenge. Most people tackle the problem, hate dealing with the problem, crush the problem, get throw it, throw it to the side at some point in time, rather than looking at the problem as a challenge, trying to fix the uh, taking on the challenge 
and then celebrating the success of that challenge and learning from that challenge. That mindset shift from problems to challenges, from getting rid of it to embracing it and learning from it is a total stress changer, man. So rather than looking at stress in your life as horrible things that need to be overcome, you know, I look at stresses in my life and say, that's a challenge that I'm going to grow and learn from and learn some valuable lessons and take accomplishment and celebrate when it's done. So really important. You supervisors and leaders out there that are dealing with people problems, people problems, people problems. <laughs> no, <laughs> what you're doing is every day you're going there learning new skills, new tactics, new techniques. So those problems should never pop up again. And you'll just have the, you'll have the skills and talents and techniques to handle them time and time again. This isn't a one-stop, quick fix, easy come, easy go. If it's easy at the beginning, it's going to be hard at the end. If it's hard at the beginning, it's going to be easy at the end. And what I've learned is what took me, what, 40 years to create doesn't change in three months. But we can take three months, six months challenges and move forward and progress. So, Bob, I really want to thank you for this great discussion. And maybe, as we always do, let's try to summarize the uncommon truth about health. And ultimately, in this diabetic discussion, being an uncommon diabetic if you're dealing with diabetes in your life. And I think it starts with accountability for ourselves that we have the ability to choose health and that is going to transform our lives you know because if you change one thing you've changed everything we're not talking about going out and running an ultra marathon like david goggins on day one his journey is exactly what we're talking about it began by setting that goal, knowing why, and then plan, action, moving forward, one step after. He kept putting one foot in front of the other, and that's how he did it with even a broken body. He achieved amazing things. Well, guess what? That's what I'm doing. That's what Bob's doing. That's what I'm challenging you to do with us. We can live healthy lives and ultimately have our ideal form of life. One choice at a time. Together, we can. Together, we will. Together, we must.